The Base 2024. Hmm. You excited? Yes. You know, if you look back at 2023, what do you think? What was it? Was it a good one? Yes. Who says it was good? Who says it was like neutral? Who says it was going in reverse? <laughs> ah, so there are some, eh? Just before I carry on, I just want to, um, there's some of us here that are eagles. You know, an eagle is a ravenous bird that soars above the storms. Some of you have forgotten that you are called to be eagles. What does an eagle do? What does the ravenous bird do? It flies in, you know, look at the crows even. It's a ravenous bird, the eagle. It, these birds, they, some of them remove the decay. Some of you are called to remove the decay. Some of you are called to remove the dirt in the spirit. You're eagles, right? I was just told that during worship. Some of you are eagles, and you've forgotten. You've forgotten that you're an eagle. We want to live with the mossies. The mossy, it's a mossy, eh? The mossies. Should be like a soccer team name or something. Year 2024 will be a year of wisdom a year of gentleness. You will require wisdom. You will be required to be innocent and gentle. Quite a mouthful. As you journey, as you venture, some of us, we've spoken about these promises, these callings, my sonship, my inheritance. It's something that needs to be hammered into the church because we need to re reach our maturity as sons, as daughters, in ruling and dominion. But we never do this, right? We hear this. It goes in here, and like if a child, like I have a child, goes out there. It never sort of reaches this empty space between my ears. Wisdom and innocence, gentleness. You see, some of us are going to face, this is why I asked, what was 2023 like? Was some going in forward first gear, some in neutral, some in reverse? Some of you are still going to face opposition in 2024. Some of you are still going to face the goodness of God in 2024. Some of you will still coast along in 2024, the decisions as you grow, as you mature, as you pursue it. You know, the word says we must be as weary as a snake and as wise and as innocent as a dove. Sorry, as wise as a snake and as innocent as a dove. Right? You hear this? You know this? Who knows that? It's in the Bible, right? That's what's going to be required. The snake that sits under the rock that doesn't leave himself outside, that hides and rests under the rock, the innocence of the dove, where no accusation can land on you, because it's going to be required in order to carry on in your purpose, in order to carry on in your destiny, in order to fulfill your calling, your promise. We spoke about this a couple of weeks ago. Your promise. Your purpose 
in between those two is preparation. We always stay in a season of preparation because we never lay down things we need to lay down. Anyway, let me get to the word. So I can see I'm not talking behind this guy's stuff, eh? I'll read you a passage out of Joshua 9. And if you want to title this, you can title it Wisdom and Gentleness. And we're going to look at a few facets of what is required. You know, Joshua 9, it speaks about Joshua attacks the southern kings. I'm just going to read a little bit for you. Joshua 9 says, When the kings of the surrounding area heard what had happened to Jericho, they quickly combined their armies to fight for their lives against Joshua and the Israelites. These were the kings of the nations west of the Jordan River, along the shores of the Mediterranean, as far north as Lebanon mountains. They were the Hittites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, Canaanites, sorry, Nines, the Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. All these Marmites and Ites, right? We know these things, huh? The people in my Bible it says the people of Gibeon trick Joshua. But when the people of Gibeon heard what had happened to Jericho and I, they resorted to trickery to save themselves. They sent ambassadors to Joshua wearing worn-out clothing as far as, and, and as though from a far journey, with patched shoes, weather-worn saddlebags on their donkeys, old patched wineskins, and dry, moldy bread. So yeah, these guys are actually only staying a couple of miles to the west of where they are camped now, at Gilgal. And they're saying, Ons kom van fair off. And they actually dress themselves in clothes that look deceiving to the eye, you know? Saying, we came from a far off place. Meantime, snitty on me hook. You know? Very clever, huh? They, the Israelites replied to the Hivites, how do we know you don't live nearby? They never had iPhones and all sorts of things. Go and just send them WhatsApp, you know? For if you do, we cannot make a treaty with you. They replied, we will be your slaves. But who are you, Joshua demanded. Where do you come from? And they told him, we are from a far distant country. We have heard of the might of the Lord your God and all that he did in Egypt and what you do to the two kings, Amorite Sihon, king of Heshbon, and Og, king of Bashan. I'm going to stop there for now. So these guys, right, they heard of what Joshua did. He had taken Jericho. Jericho had fallen from the just obedience, being obedient to the voice of the Lord, walking around Jericho. You know, the news around Jericho had spread then what happened is they were supposed to sacrifice all the loot of Jericho. Now you know the story, huh? They were supposed to give up all the spoils of the war to God. But there was a chap there that kept some. So Israel, Israel went to the city of Ai, or my, like artificial intelligence in my Bible, it's AI. All right, it's easy. Lord's even from then, you know, he's thinking about now, you know. And they went to the city of Ai and they tried to attack the city and they were ambushed. And Israel lost about 36,000 people, men, and there was only about 3,000. They sent 3,000 of them. I'm getting to this. I'm building you a picture. I'm giving you some context. All right? So because they were ambushed at eyes because of the man's sin at Jericho, they stole some of the spoils. I'm just giving you a bit of context. So, um, you know, they had to cleanse this. They found a gentleman that did this. And then they went and took eye, the city eye, and they annihilated them. Now they are camped. And obviously the kings have heard of this. The five kings. So five kings come together and say, you know what, we are going to lay down our impartialities so we can annihilate Israel. They heathen kings. They're from the line of Canaan. You know, they, they don't want God's people in their land. So they say, you know what, let's put aside what, let's put aside our differences. We don't want Israel and Joshua in our land. They're going to possess, take what is, take what's ours, let's take them out. You see, friends, I want to tell you that when you're doing the work of the Lord, the devil and the enemy is going to want to structure himself around you. You see, we can actually learn from these kings. I'm not saying we must be like these heathen kings, right? But what I'm saying to you is, we need to be in unity like these kings. Think about these guys, right? They don't know God. We don't know God. We worship our own gods. 
Sorry? We worship our own gods. But we are going to unify ourselves for a common cause. If only the body of Christ in general can walk in unity like that. Imagine what we would do. Yeah, they are working on a spiritual principle. The law of agreement. The law of unity. They don't know God. They just want Joshua out the land. It's time we as people stand in unity. This will be a year of wisdom and innocence and you will have to unify. You will have to walk in one accord, my friends. One accord, one purpose, one vision, one language like Genesis 11 speaks of. One language and God came down and looked at the Tower of Babel and He said, nothing is impossible for them. Now I have to divert, I have to give them different languages and spread them out. It speaks of the spiritual, uh, the spiritual law of agreement, of unity, just like these kings. They lay down their interests. Just think about us laying down our interests for a common purpose. This year you will need unity. I guarantee you. It's part of being wise. It's part of being walking in innocence. You see, I like to think of it like this. Where does my allegiance lie? You know, where, where is my allegiance? We say, we speak it, we sing it. My allegiance is to unite with one another. My allegiance is in honoring God, I'm walking in unity with those around me. We cannot have this year of divisions, my friends. You cannot. You know, let me say like this. The name, I'm not giving the devil glory. Devil means diabolos. That's the word for it, diabolos. It means the divider, the accuser. We heard this last week, of the brethren. In order to overcome that, we are going to have to walk in unity. Unity. I'm going to drill this in. So when the year comes, remember, 7th of January, whatever, the, what's today, the 7th of January? Amen. It's been a good holiday. Number one, unity. What do you have to do, number one? Who do I walk in unity with? Those on my left and on my right. Heathen kings. They use their own the law that God's creating, that God created to overcome God's people. They tried. Let's unify together and we can overcome Joshua. Is this making sense? It's time for unity. It's part of wisdom. It's part of your innocence. As you're on your journey, your purpose, your calling, individually, working together to build the body, to build the community. You see, friends, because obedience is what puts you in line with your, your destiny, right? But you know what? We need to be wise and innocent. Joshua had to be wise here. We'll see now. We'll, we'll get to it. You know, then from verse 3 to verse 9, you know, it speaks about how the Gibeonites came. I mean, I read the story to you. And how they deceived, how they tricked. You know? Why did Joshua fail here? He did not inquire of God. You see, when you're going doing war, right? When we're going out and spreading the gospel and we're doing 
serving the purposes of the Lord. Sometimes, you know what, we're inquiring the Lord. Lord, do you want us to do this? Is this in line with my, my purpose, my calling? Yes, son, yes, daughter, yes, church. But when some people come bringing peace, we don't ask the Lord. When some people come offering an allegiance, we don't have to ask the Lord because it's, it's good to the eye. This year, you're going to have to watch. You're going to have to discern. You're going to have to inquire of God on all things. You're going to have to ask the Lord, Father, not just when I'm fulfilling my purpose, but when I'm also resting. Be wary of those this year that will bring deception, that will bring trickery. This is what they did. The Gibeonites came to Joshua and said, listen, you know, we come from a far off land. You know, we want to be with you. They lied. You know, how, how is it that you get tricked and deceived? How is it? You know, they, they had to speak it, obviously, right? They had to come with their mouths. Be careful of those that offer peace and allegiance when it's dripping honey. I'm just saying it, guys. Because you're going to require wisdom and innocence. You are going to need it. When you're pursuing what God has said for you, your purpose, when you're walking in the promised land, you still need wisdom. It shows you there's two points here. There's the outright opposition that comes against us, and then there's those that walk among us that try and remove you and hinder you. If I cannot beat Joshua by sending, you know, these guys, these given out, are like, well, we don't want to join the five kings. We're going to do it our own way. So we'll go to the more clandestine tricks, you know. Beware. The word says, beware that no man deceive you. Matthew 7 even says, I'm sending you out as sheep amongst wolves. It's tough. Well, 2024, did we, you know, did we want to hear this? Mm. It challenges us all because we get into this routine where it's good and it's only good. These guys faced it, man. And after three days, the Gibeonites were caught out. No, now you're in covenant. Now you're walking in agreement. All that they wanted was a peace treaty. In the Old Testament, if you made a vow or a covenant, you could not go back on it. You still can't now. I cannot get out of this covenant with the Gibeonites, said Joshua, because we signed this treaty. But think on the opposite end of the stick. God is still so gracious. He still allowed the Gibeonites to serve, right? Sit in the camp and serve. Yes, they should not have come and lied. Beware, my friends. Beware. Ask the Lord. Number two. What was number one? Come, number one. Unity. Unity. Number two is inquire of the Lord. You will inquire of the Lord at every corner that you are walking on, whether it seems good, whether it seems bad. You will ask the Father in close intimacy. From the biggest thing to the smallest thing. Sounds ridiculous. Oh, jeez. Now we only ask the Lord for big things in life, right? Like, Lord, must I go? Yeah, must I do this? Must I pack my stuff and go to this country? Whatever it is. The small things, ah, oh, I've got this. You see, that relationship that Jesus had with his father, you know? We miss that. The son. You know, when you see the son, you see the father. When I see you, I'm supposed to see the father.
When I see you, I do not want to see a weak person. It's weak, man. Jesus was a man of sorrow. But I'm still living in my position. Reaching my maturity. They were preaching maturity messages thousands of years ago in, in the time of Paul. Yeah, we have, like we said earlier, the Tower of Babel. God's just living in agreement. God's just living in unity. They weren't even sons of God. Can you imagine when you live as a son of God in your position and walk in unity? Woo. Then we talk in danger. When those that come, when you're doing the Lord's work, Father, what is it that you want me to do? Do this, my son. When you're going out and moving out and moving out, and then you're in a place where there are others coming to you, you're still at war, right? You're still at war. Be wary of those that come with sweet honey. Guys, I'm just telling you what the Lord told me to tell you, right? Take it up with Him. Unity. Inquire of the Lord. Why do you think the Gibeonites... Yeah, you know, I don't want to get destroyed by, by Joshua, clearly. This is a mighty army. This is God's army, man. This is, this is some serious fellows, right? You know? I don't want to get destroyed. Let's go and try and work our way in there. My friends, many are going to come this year from left, right, and center, and we are going to have to ask the Lord. We are going to have to inquire at every corner that you turn to the left and to the right. And when you are walking straight, you will still ask the Lord. You will not look to the left, you will not look to the right, but you will move forward. Because you will ask the Lord. And if you do not ask the Lord, as I say, so it be, you will stop dead in your track. May what I say come to pass, because this is what the Lord says. If you ask the Lord in a choir of the Lord, you will move forward in your purpose and your destiny. You know, like the Gibeonites, save me, Joshua. Save me by falsehood. Save me out of lying, right? Joshua, we are from, you know, we just, yeah, we're not from four ways, we're from four ways, but actually they're from like East End, right? Bosque side, you know? We cannot think as believers that out of weakness and evil, good can come. Think about it, right? You cannot think like the Gibeonites that when I'm operating out of this weakness, his falsehood, that good things will come of it. My friends, I'm going to tell you that this year, if you walk like that, you will see no fruit. It will be a dry, parched piece of soil. The Lord this year is going to require us to ask direct questions. The Lord's going to ask, he's going to ask of us, he wants this, the very thing that is, many don't want to offer up, this heart, every dark corner of it, every corner of light. This year will require intimacy when I inquire of the Lord. Seek my face. Many have forgotten. These Gideonites save us. Maybe they didn't want the judgment of death, right? Like the, like, if we don't go here to Joshua now and please, whatever it takes, we might just get annihilated like Jericho and I. Maybe they were like, in order, I don't want to get judgment here. I don't want to receive judgment. They were doing, willing to do whatever. They were willing to say, we will serve you no matter what. Even though it was trickery. Sometimes in order, sometimes we might just have to, in order to avoid judgment, go and repent. 
Go and say, hey, Father, you know, this time I've messed it up here. Because, friends, it's getting finer and finer. The line is getting finer and finer. The works of the devil is getting harder and darker and stronger. That's why it's time to unite. That's why it's time to inquire of the Lord. You cannot do this by yourself no more. You cannot. You see, the beginning of the year, this is how I put this thing together. I saw these two roads. And I saw this road to the left and this road to the right. And many are going on this road to the right because it seems good. It seems, I'm not saying right like the road to the right road. I'm saying the right, this direction. Many are going in the right direction because they think it's right. But they're not testing the road. They're not testing where it's leading to. Be wary, friends. Be wary. Just like the Israelites camping at Gilgal, just killed Jericho. I, now they're sitting, five kings. I'm just recapping for you. They're uniting against them. There's outright, there's opposition you will face. Just like the Gibeonites coming inside, you will face opposition closest to you. Moral of the story, inquire the, of the Lord. Ask the Father. I guarantee you, friends, if you do not ask this year, you're going to find yourself in hot water. The Lord is requiring that of, of us as His sons, as His daughters. Test everything. He says it in John. Test everything. This is why we should stand together. It's a hard thing. Because in order to stand together, it means it's no longer I that live, but that Christ lives in me, right? Do you have an understanding of that verse? It's no longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me. It means there's no left, nothing left for you. That's how unity functions. That God would go down and say, Jeez, Lord, you built a tower. Can you see the power of that? Unity. And then there's something else that I want to tell you. And this came during worship. This is going to be a year where you will have to honor one another. You see, honor is the, the unspoken language of God. When you honor someone, you receive what they have. When you honor a, a person, when you honor the righteous, when you honor what God has placed upon your path, you receive the fullness of what God has placed upon that path for you. Let us not be those that um, uh, honor the Lord with our mouths, but our hearts are far away. It's a common thing. We honor the Lord, bless you, Father, whatever, love you, Lord. But man, my heart is still stuck at some pond in the wilderness there, drinking like this, when I should be drinking out of a chalice. I want to read it. Let me find it. Sorry. I only say what I get given, right? Honor the Lord. Honor the Lord in His ways. Yes, if I ask the book now, say
honoring the Lord unlocks the fullness. Honoring the Father. Honoring the Father unlocks what you have. What you're saying, Lord. I'm just listening. I'm listening. Maybe the Lord doesn't want me to find this book, you know. Mm. See, the times of, I'm just listening, I'm just, this is what I'm getting. The time of the presets of men is done. This is what I see. What's the preset? The, pre, the precepts. They are the constructs. They are the ways men build systems and structures. It's done. It's finished. It's going to lead you down that road, that one on the right direction that is not right. I'm just saying it, friends. Anyway, I don't know why I'm saying that. The precepts of men is going to lead you down an empty road. I can't find that book. It's in that Bible somewhere. It's no longer by my strength. It's no longer by my power. It's no longer about what I can do. It's no longer about me. It's hard. It's by my spirit. It's by unity. It's by inquiring of the Lord. It's by honoring. I got onto that honor thing and I couldn't get to it. I've got to find this honor thing. Must I pray against the devil now? Let's see, let's see, let's see. Thank you, Lord. It's about honor. Seeking the Father. Inquiring of the Lord. Lord, should I? Should I not? Yeah, Isaiah 29, 13, and so the Lord says, since these people say they are mine but do not obey me, and since they worship amounts to mere words, Learned by rote, therefore I will take vengeance on these hypocrites. I'm not saying you're a hypocrite. And make their wisest counselors as fools. We have to get into a place, friends, where we honor the Father with our hearts. Where we honor each other with our hearts. It's so easily discernible, right? When you honor someone and it's just lip service. Other translations call it lip service. You want to go in your purpose this year, you want to grow, you will inquire of the Lord, you will walk in unity, and you will honor one another. Amen. If you cannot stick to those three things, sorry, those three things, you will miss it. You will walk in unity as one voice. You will sing one song. You will love the Lord your God with all your heart. All your soul, all your mind, all your strength. You will inquire of the Lord as one. Lord, what should we do here? We are at a left-hand turn. We will observe those that come. We are to spare the gospel, friends, but we are going to watch out for Gibeonites. We are going to watch out for those that come peacefully wanting treaties. I don't know how else to paint it for you, you know. Let's not sugarcoat things like this, right? I forgot my sugarcoat machine at home. And you will walk in honor. You cannot past division. This is it's like there's this parameter in the spirit. This is why I wrote this thing down here. 
There's this parameter in the spirit, like it's, I see it there. If you cast the vision, you're touching on something that it's going to eat you. It's like the, the Lord is putting this down in the spiritual realm across the world. I'm telling you, I'm seeing this. I don't know how to tell you how I see these things, you know? So I'm trying to explain it to you. But there's these, there's like these lines that are hanging in the spirit realm, and if you touch it, 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 it bites you back. It makes me think of like when you're on the phone and you grab the, the drought that's got the electricity by mistake. I've done that before. It's, when you're on the phone, you're talking and you don't even know what's going on, and all of a sudden, that's what's in the spirit. That's what's hovering there. If you cast a vision, that thing is going to bite you. I don't know why. It's like the Lord is laying it. Maybe he's laying it down in order to, to bring us into a direction. Listen. That's what I see. Don't cast a vision. I'm asking you, don't do that. You can get that shock. I don't know why. I'm also giving, I'm helping you here, right? I'm looking out for my friends. Eh? It's going to shock you. It's going to hit you. Because this year the Lord is advancing rapidly. He's moving forward. He's moving, man. He's going to restore order this year. There's many of us, I see it, that want order. Fatigue. There's even questions on this side of here. I see them. What am I meant to be doing? Tired of life. Huh. You're a son. By the blood of the Lamb, you will rise up. You will rise up. You will stand. You will run and not grow faint. You will walk and not be weary. Unity. If there are things inside of your heart today that you have to lay down, that has divided you from your family, from your purpose, from your anointing, from your calling, make 2024 that year where you lay it down. And it doesn't matter, friends, what it is. Doesn't matter what it is. You know, the, the devil will remind you, oh, but look at you. Look what you did. He wants to keep you stuck there. He wants you to remain at the pool in the wilderness drinking with your hand. If there's those things, you need to think about it right now. You cannot miss this opportunity. This year, I'm telling you now, friends, there's no place for that. This year, we are going to run and not grow weary. We are going to run in unity. And at every corner, we are going to what? Come on, friends. Inquire of the Lord. And we are going to honor one another. When we honor one another, we honor God. That's what's coming. The warning was, don't cast a vision. Just think of that thing that I'm explaining to you. That, that lines in the spirit. It's there. It's there. I want the worship team to come back, please. I want you to think about this. Now see yourself as Joshua. See yourself as serving a kingdom like Joshua. Serving the purposes of the Lord. My friends, serving the purposes of the Lord is dangerous. We're in a war, right? You need to be in union. You need to lay down the things that are stealing. You need to go and ask the Lord of where you currently at. Lord, 
Right now, this is where I'm at. This is what I'm doing. Is this what you want? Simple. Basic. Because if I don't ask, I get into agreements that I should not be. And you will love. You will honor. As the band plays, I just want you to take a moment. See what the Spirit says. Take a moment. Think about those things. There's some of us here that are asking, Lord, more. Some of us are challenged. You will not have the year of 2023 in 2024. It will not be the same. Let's close our eyes for a minute. Let's close our eyes for a minute. Father, I pray, Lord, that the weight of your glory will fall upon these people, Lord. I'm going to pray in tongues. I rebuke fatigue, tiredness, Lord, I pray and declare direction over those that don't have. I pray, Father, for promise right now. I unlock direction and promise for you.